Thanks, Mark. With 2011 behind us, it's the time of year where film fans like myself like to get heavy into list making. And this year I've tried to highlight some lesser known movies that deserve some big love. Coming in at number three in my top movies of 2011 is the coming of age comedy Attack the Block. Like the other sci-fi flick of the summer, Super 8, Attack the Block boasts a cast of young unknowns forced to grow up fast in the face of an alien invasion. But while J.J. Abrams' tribute to Spielberg's classics gets a bit too emotionally manipulative in the final act, Attack the Block feels honest and refreshingly real. Or about as real as a movie about a gang of impoverished youths defending their London apartment complex from space monsters can possibly feel. Just like Super 8, it's the kids that make it work, as the movie is full of terrific humor sold by strong lead performances. Writer-director Joe Cornish's debut film is like Goonies meets Gremlins, and it was far and away the most fun I had at the theater all year. Staying in England, my number two movie is the best spy thriller to grace the silver screen in quite some time. And no, it's not Mission Impossible 4. Based on the John le Carre novel, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy takes place during the height of the Cold War, as a Russian mole has penetrated the highest ranks of British intelligence. Only Gary Oldman as a retired spy called back into service can smoke out the rat. This one is as tense as they come, as the movie demands your attention by never spoon-feeding you anything. The cast reads like a who's who list of British A-listers, but it's the newcomers who outshine their established co-stars, as soon-to-be Batman villain Tom Hardy and Sherlock's Benedict Cumberbatch steal the show. Director Thomas Alfredson made his mark with the Swedish vampire drama Let the Right One In, and his English language debut shares the same sense of atmosphere, helped largely by some gorgeous cinematography. While Mission Impossible 4 may have been the year's best action flick, nothing put my brain to work quite like Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy. And finally, the top spot on my list goes to Nicholas Winding Refn's crime masterpiece, Drive. This is not a car movie in the vein of Fast Five, my pick for comedy of the year, but a slow, brooding character study. Ryan Gosling stars as Driver, a strong and silent man with no name. Given little dialogue, Gosling does all the heavy lifting with his eyes and still manages to make a massive impression. Women love him, men want to be him, and nerds want to wear his scorpion jacket. Opposite Gosling is comedian Albert Brooks, cast wildly against type as a stab-happy villain. The movie was shot using the Alexa, a top-of-the-line digital camera, and the streets of Los Angeles have never looked so good. Combined with its synth soundtrack and neon pink titles, the movie's 80s throwback aesthetic is mesmerizing. While the first half can be trying, it's deliberately paced to amp up the impact of some truly shocking violence as the movie races towards the finish line. In an age where so many films desensitize us with numbing, meaningless violence, Drive hits hard, and it's an instant classic.